else that wants to speak, uh, I think the sheriff made the announcement just before we came up here, but there's three things uh, to speak to. The first thing, we're going to have a public hearing on the uh, uh, proposed change to the ordinance for the plan board, which has to do with the term limits. That's the first thing. Uh, the second is the uh, proposed amendment to the subdivision ordinance for Macon County. Uh, that will begin in theory at 630. It may be after that. Uh, and then the third thing is public comment. So those are three different sheets. We'll make sure everybody understand that, uh, that you need to sign up to speak um, for those specific things. Robbie, I think everybody's clear on that. All right. the meeting we actually uh, started downstairs and decided to move up here for a little more since we had more than 49 people here uh, this is Valentine's Day so happy Valentine's Day I uh, hope everybody loves everybody that's uh, a good thing. <laughs> uh, if if you would all we need downstairs was just uh, start the meeting if you would let's stand together um, I want to share a couple of things uh, I was on the school board a few years ago we started something with our students I thought was exceptional we started uh, teaching character traits along with the regular uh, curriculum. And then with the regular curriculum, we began to teach things like responsibility, respect, caring and compassion, perseverance, tolerance, integrity, and citizenship. And I think we're all about all those things. So as we ponder those and ponder this wonderful county that we love, uh, just join me for a moment as we be quiet. Commissioner Beal, if he would please, our pledge of allegiance. Face the flag. To join me in the pledge of allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. <laughs> At this time, I'll declare uh, us in a, a public hearing, Mr. Attorney. Uh, and so we'll, we'll be convened in a public hearing at this time. This is for uh, proposed amendments to an ordinance uh, with the establishment of a planning board uh, for Macon County. Uh, Chester, would you like to read uh, that uh, for us, please? Amendments to an ordinance to establish a planning board for Macon County as amended. Whereas the Macon County Board of Commissioners adopted an ordinance to establish the planning board for Macon County on or about March 27, 1972, and the same has been amended on or about January 5, 2004. And whereas the Board of Commissioners wishes to make amendments to sections 1.4, 1.5, 1.7 of an ordinance to establish a planning board for Macon County as amended and as set forth below. And whereas the Board of Commissioners finds the same to be in the public interest and to promote the public health, safety, and welfare pursuant to authority vested in it by North Carolina General Statute Section 153A-121, and whereas the amendments set forth here and after are authorized by the provisions of North Carolina General Statute Section 153A-323. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Macon County Board of Commissioners that Section 1 of an ordinance to establish a planning board for Macon County as amended and as it presently exists is hereby amended to read as follows. Number one, uh, I'm sorry, Section 1.4. The governing board of the town of Highland shall nominate the appointee for seat 10 to the board of commissioners. The initial term for seat 10 shall be for two years and thereafter for four years. However, notwithstanding the foregoing, effective January 2012 and thereafter, the term for seat 10 on the planning board is hereby reduced from four years to three years. And section 1.5 of an ordinance to establish a planning board for making county as amended and as it presently exists is hereby amended to read as follows. <coughs> section 1.5. The governing board of the town of Franklin shall nominate the appointee for seat 11 to the board of commissioners. The term for seat 11 shall be for four years. However, notwithstanding the foregoing, effective January 2014, I'm sorry, 2014, 
and thereafter the term on C11 on the planning board is reduced from four years to three years. In section 1.7 of an ordinance to establish a planning board for Macon County as amended and as it presently exists is hereby amended to read as follows. Section 1.7, appointees may be reappointed for successive terms. However, notwithstanding the foregoing, the following rules shall apply, control, and prevail. <coughs> A, no member of the planning board may serve on the planning board for more than six consecutive years. It being understood that service on the planning board by a given individual prior to the effective date of this provision shall be counted in determining the eligibility of an in individual to be reappointed to the planning board. B, any member of the planning board who has served six consecutive years or more as a member of the planning board shall wait at least one three-year term before becoming eligible to serve another term as a member of the planning board and C, the present terms of the members of the planning board as of the effective date of this provision shall not be affected by the provisions of section 1.7 A and B. These amendments to an ordinance to establish a planning board for Macon County as amended are adopted and effective on February 14, 2012. Now, if I may take just a moment and note that this is a draft and it is for discussion purposes only at this point. And just to clarify, the board did vote to put this on the table to have a, uh, a public hearing about that, and that's the reason we're here tonight. And let me just remind you, we have, uh, well, first of all, we had 33 people sign up to speak to this. Uh, and I read in our board, um, Chester, what do you call this? The rules and procedures for the Board of Commissioners that when we have a hearing that the, the presenter uh, is allowed five minutes uh, and since actually we're technically the presenter, there is no presenter, and any other person speaking in favor or opposed to the uh, request shall have three minutes for each remark. And I just did some quick math. If we do 33 people times three minutes, that's an hour and a half at best. Um, and I want to give as much respect to, uh, let's see who the last one, to uh, Hal Chapman and David Culpepper were the last two to sign up. We reduced Sue Walker, which was the first one to sign up. So, Mr. Attorney, we, we will give him three minutes, but I would respectfully ask you if, if, uh, if you could keep it shorter than that uh, to help us all move through this. I think that would be appreciated. And also, just common sense, if, if, uh, if someone says pretty much what you'd like to say, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I agree with what Bob said, and I think we all understand that. And that keeps you having to repeat the same thing, and, and uh, again, in the interest of time. But we will not limit you, we'll give you three minutes and we'll take a full hour and a half if that's what we need to do but, uh, in the interest of time. Uh, so we'll go through this. Uh, Ms. Sue Walker was first one to sign up. So Sue, we recognize you at this time, please. Is the mic on? Yes, yes. yes. Back in the 1990s, I was privileged to serve several years on the planning board, six of those years as chairman. During that time, I served with a lot of people some of whom had a personal agenda, but most of whom were just honest, decent people who wanted to keep the county as much as possible the way they found it. It would be very surprising to any person who has never served on an advisory board to know just how much research, study, and learning about other places and other ways and attempting to adapt plans and regulations which serve well somewhere else to our county. All of this is done before anything is presented to the commissioners. The best and most complete information which can be assembled is sorted, reviewed, gone over, fought over, and settled down until the, something seems to make sense to us. And the board members do spend their own money to serve. When I was on the planning board, we were stopped in the middle of a project hoping to promote better and safer design for housing developments being constructed in the county. Stopped by an organized group of realtors who descended on a commissioner's meeting <coughs> protesting our actions, although no suggested ordinance had been presented. At the recommendation of the county manager at the time, the commissioners ordered us to stop our fledgling plans. 
This was about the time that the developers of Wildflower showed up at a commissioner's meeting and went to great length to explain what wonderful things they could do for Mason <coughs> County since we had no ordinances concerning their structures or their development. <coughs> the rest of that story is history. There are homes in this county who were, have no access to them can be made by fire departments or any other emergency vehicle. A couple of those homes have already burned to the ground. Serving on any voluntary advisory board is a thankless, sometimes frustrating undertaking. Contrary to recently published charges that planning board members wish to dictate to their fellow citizens, no planning board member nor any other advisory board member can do that. To paraphrase an old comment, the board, the planning board uh, presents or proposes the commissioners dispose of either accepting or using. The board I served on was lucky enough not to be attacked in the public press by name and in such a personal and hurtful manner as has been endured by the present planning board members. To disband the planning board or to cripple the effectiveness of the members with term limits can be likened to the situation of an ancient king who saw riding into his castle one day one of his knights wounded and bleeding, his armor dented and his horse falling in exhaustion. The knight throws himself from his dying horse and falls to his knees before his king. Oh my king, he cries, the battle is lost. Your army is destroyed upon the field, and only I am left to bring word that the enemy comes fast behind me, planning to storm your castle, kill you and your family, and lay waste your lands. The king, in fear and anger, pulls his sword and strikes the head of the messenger who brought the terrible news from his shoulders before the king can learn what he needed to know to protect his people. How useless and foolish to kill the messenger. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waller. Very much. William Dewey Gunning. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here as a citizen of this great county and state and country. I'd like to thank our commissioners for the job that they do for Macon County. I'd like to thank Lewis Penland and all the members of the planning board for their efforts. <coughs> I appreciate them greatly. There is a need for the planning board. There is a need for everybody to work together. I'm not interested in shouting matches and name calling and belittling this one or belittling that one. I'm simply uh, looking for people that are interested in making it work. Everybody's got rights as long as they don't infringe on somebody else's. I simply am saying let's work together, let's appreciate our planning board. Let's appreciate our commissioners and forego all the uh, drama and the other stuff that's associated, been, been forthcoming. Let's get the job done and let's make this uh, an even better place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Jim. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Les Slater. appreciate the opportunity to speak to this issue. I'm not here to suggest that we need to get rid of a planning board. I'm here to support the decision of the commissioners when they called for a change in the agenda and to write new rules for the planning board. Those rules, as suggested by the commissioners, were adapted unanimously. And I support that issue. And I think it's a great idea not to have certain members forever serving on a board. And term limits is an issue that the public has embraced in various levels of government. I think it's a coming issue that is well represented. It does not prevent people with skills serving on the commission and on the planning board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slater. 
Mike Jackson. <coughs> Good evening, commissioners. I'll try to keep my comments brief. Um, as one of the organizers of a citizen group called Making Sense, I've certainly done my best to articulate uh, the case for a slope ordinance in Macon County. But let me be really clear. Our organization is committed to a solution, not an ordinance. And I've said many times in public forums that it's about a solution, not an ordinance. It just happens to be that the only solution that was put forward is in this draft uh, slope ordinance that was uh, in the planning board and is currently tabled and sort of led to, to all of this hoopla. The mission of our organization is uh, more fundamental than any one particular issue. We want to see the people of this county, regardless of political ideologies, come together and just find solutions to our most difficult challenges. We're committed to promoting civic engagement, to advocating for open and efficient government, and to working to move past politics as usual and do the hard work of creating innovative solutions that will ultimately lead to a bright future for our county. That being said, we are as interested as anyone in seeing the heated rhetoric surrounding land use planning in general and, and uh, the heated rhetoric from the planning board in particular return to a more healthy and constructive discourse. But that can't be at the expense of the core values of our democracy. The proposed amendment to the planning board ordinance before you tonight are a bad idea not because they threaten the reappointment of any particular board member, but because they represent the kind of backdoor political move maneuvering that has become all too common in our national politics but should have no place at the local level. If this board was generally committed to the idea of term limits, which on their own aren't a bad idea, we wouldn't be discussing just passing term limits for one particular board. We could do it across uh, the county. So then you have to ask yourself, what's the motivation for this move? If it's to, pl to punish the planning board for working on an ordinance that this very board asked them to do, uh, that doesn't make any sense. And at any time, we could have gone to them and said, you know, this is getting out of control. Let's move on to something else. But that didn't happen. If people are upset because there, there were public disagreements, I can understand that. Like I said, I want to see the rhetoric toned down as well. But there's a case to be made that there's value in that process. I'm personally not happy with the outcome, but uh, there was a process. It was open. Yes, it got ugly at times, but that's one of the core parts of our, our democracy. Everybody can see that happen, so I'm, I'm suspect of moves to do otherwise. Furthermore, if there are planning board members with whom you aren't happy, simply don't reappoint them. That mechanism already exists. All of this taken together makes it hard for me to see this move as anything but a thinly veiled move to provide political cover for removing particular planning board members. Three minutes. Three minutes is up. All I'm going to say is we don't need more Washington style politics. We need leadership. We don't need the same old bickering. We need solutions. <coughs> we can do better. I'm asking you to start tonight and don't pass these amendments. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, James Birch. Was this the time to speak on the, the general comments? or no, it, we're, Right now we're talking about the uh, proposed change to the ordinance regarding the term limits to the plan. Well, I know but they talked about slow, steep slope fall to go, and so just wait and talk about it later. What, what you want, we want to address the ordinance. We really need to talk about the ordinance. If you want to talk about anything in general, you can sign up here in the open. Yeah, comments. that's like wrong, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Bill Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Burke. <coughs> Mr. Burke, if you'll see the chair, he's got together to sign up. He signed up already on that one, too. <coughs> Uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, I drive a school bus for, on Peaks Creek. And I was driving it two months before Hurricane Ivan came through. And one Friday afternoon, uh, the, uh, we knew it was coming, and 
I didn't see these kids for three weeks that were living on Peach Creek, a very enchanted little stream, uh, very Japanese-like. The houses were built right on the stream where they shouldn't have been. And uh, you, you can't convince me we don't need a steep slope ordinance. Now, Ms. Sewell really covered about uh, shooting or attacking the messenger. We don't need to do this. You gentlemen have a real moral liability to do the right thing about this. Moral and possibly legal liability. Now, what we're really talking about is good government. Something that's good for all of us. And our enlightened self-interest. Now, I would like to see you grandfather in anybody that's been working recently on the planning board because I, I feel too that this is a thinly veiled attempt just to remove some specific people and that's that's not right. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Prof. Uh, Lenny Jordan. Thank you for having this forum to discuss an issue that is important to the future of Macon County. I learned in business that to be successful, you have to have help from other folks. You must be surrounded with folks smarter than yourself. You need good advisors focused on success, not people that just tell you what you want to hear or for that matter think exactly as you do. In business, I work to retain these folks because they were a big part of guaranteeing my success. That's why I struggle to understand some commissioners' desire to get rid of a board that has a history of putting our county first. Folks that volunteer their time and have gained valuable experience working on a very serious matter. In successful business, facts drive decisions, <coughs> not petty individual agendas. So let's look at the facts. The county close to us has unemployment as of December of this year, of 2011, of 15.9%. The average home value, $115,000. Not much tax revenue. Last year, they issued just 34 building permits. Their tax base is declining, and their business outlook is bleak. One of their commissioners was quoted as saying, we don't want no slope ordinance. You can look at these mountains and starve to death. He, of course, was alluding to what he thought would save them development without regulation. Two other nearby counties do have slope ordinances. They also have an unemployment rate <coughs> of 9.3 and 9.4 percent. Certainly not great, but 50 percent better than the other county. Home values, i.e. tax revenues, over $300,000 per home. Building permits, over 200. Folks, we're at a crossroads. Do we want to follow a county struggling not to starve economically? Or do we want to look at these mountains and realize they are our treasure? And with proper management and vision, we can be in a position to be stronger than ever. Wouldn't we all be better off with a growing, vibrant economy? We cannot afford to take a wrong turn at the crossroads because a few people <coughs> seem to wrongly believe that any regulation is bad. I urge you as commissioners to stand up for what you know is right and not arbitrarily impose term limits on the planning board which would further personal agendas at the expense of all of us. We do not have to behave like Washington. We're better than that. We need smart people making smart decisions. Thank you. Uh, I think Chester would probably like for me to announce at this point at 630 and we do have another scheduled uh, hearing which I announced a minute ago probably wouldn't happen at 630 but we had to advertise the time so I will announce to you now that that hearing will take place at the end of this hearing which uh, will be a little while longer so bear with us. Uh, next we have Christina Oliver. Hello. Well
Well, um, I'm new to Franklin, but obviously I figured out where the place to be on Valentine's Day is. <laughs> uh, we, my husband and I, just built a house over the last year in Diamond Falls Estates. Diamond Falls Estates was, I believe, the first subdivision in Franklin that was developed after the subdivision ordinance went into effect. I am here to tell you that if it were not for the subdivision ordinance, I would have so many more problems than I have right now. Uh, I do not have roads completed to my house and all kinds of other amenities that were promised. Even worse, I have neighbors, people that have bought lots, that cannot build on their property because they have no access to their property. I could tell you the names of four people whose houses would be under construction right now who would be bringing jobs into Macon County and tax revenue into Macon County if they could get to their house if the amenities were, that were promised were finished. So the subdivision ordinance and the work that the planning commission has, the committee has done is extremely important. I think that term limits are a reasonable concept. My concern is just the timing of the term limits. It seems to me like if there is an important <coughs> issue that remains unresolved and is politically controversial, maybe that issue should be resolved before time limits are imposed. There are a lot of people that have a lot of expertise on this committee, and it seems a shame to waste all the work that has been done, which I know is a tremendous effort on a lot of volunteers' part. So I would recommend that you at least postpone that until we can resolve an issue that everybody knows needs to be resolved. It has become a political issue that seems to be based on this theoretical concept of rights and eliminating regulations. Well, these developers that tell you they don't need regulations to do business, have you ever looked at the covenants that they write for the people that buy property in their area? Everything is regulated if you buy property in a development, down to the things like how many figurines you have in your yard and what color you paint your house. If you ask why there's so many regulations, they say that's to protect the value of your investment. It seems a little hypocritical that they don't want regulation on what they do, but they realize that buyers want regulation that protects their investment. So I ask you to think about what their motives are in telling you that regulation hurts business. I can tell you firsthand that regulation has hurt Macon County, or lack of enforcement of regulation has hurt Macon County because people cannot build in the area where I live. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Oliver. <coughs> and uh, next is Shirley Chess. <coughs> Gentlemen, I wholeheartedly support the planning board as it exists. I wholeheartedly support Ms. Penley and his caring leadership. And I wholeheartedly support the members of the board whom I know and have personally witnessed in their diligent exercise of their required duties over these past several years. To even consider the recent regressive suggestions proposed is tantamount to shooting our lovely county economically and environmentally in the heart. We cannot allow this relentless and baseless fear-mongering to continue. I suggest that those who want to cripple the planning board redirect their diatribe. The planning board suggests that reasonable safeguards for making counties would that our county, we would not need to fear that our homes, property, businesses, and our very lives are in jeopardy. Contractors would not need to fear potential laws or lawsuits, and realtors could sell safe homes and home sites. We cannot suffer additional condemnation of people who obviously have the best interests of our county and its population at heart. If we do not support our planning board, we will suffer. And those who propose these ridiculously aggressive policies 
will wake up one day to realize that they've not only killed the proverbial golden goose, our beautiful area, but they've shot themselves in the foot as well. Gentlemen, <coughs> support our planning board. Thank you. And happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, sir. Uh, big drum. Thank you for the opportunity. I urge you to adopt all the proposed amendments to the Planning Board and Ordinance being considered here tonight. The Planning Board was originally formed, as was mentioned, in 1972, and uh, with five members at the time. In 2004, the ordinance was amended to increase the Planning Board to 11 members and change the terms of their service. The January 5, 2004 ordinance amendment said, quote, the Board of Commissioners has determined that the citizens of Macon County will be better served by increasing <coughs> the number of members serving on the planning board to promote broader citizen participation. I couldn't have said it better. <coughs> Requiring a turnover in planning board membership will lead to broader citizen participation. I believe this greater diversity could improve the board. I disagree with Commissioner Beale's comment at the January 14th work session that these changes could hurt the planning board because it will result in a number of turnovers of experienced members. I've attended almost every planning board meeting for the past year and a half and have seen nothing that required specific expertise or experience to be a productive board member. Any citizen concerned enough to apply for the planning board and be appointed should be able to immediately be a productive member. <coughs> Macon County Department of Planning, Permitting, and Development staff members Jack Morgan and Derek Rowland do a great job of being the technical consultants to the planning board when needed. Some might argue that term limits aren't required because commissioners could simply not reappoint an individual. We all know what happened in November and December of 2010 when a member wasn't reappointed. Some might argue it will be hard to find citizens willing to serve. I believe you will be considering an appointment process for authorities, boards, commissions, and committees later tonight. It seems to be a step in the right direction to improve citizen participation. I doubt many citizens know there are about 51 different authorities, boards, commissions, and committees you make appointments to. The proposal calls for advertising openings in the Franklin Press. I would urge you to also update the county website to easily find information on every one of these groups, including members, expiration dates of their appointments, goals of the group, and meeting schedules, meeting minutes, etc. So citizens are fully aware of the potential for service on these groups. I believe all the proposed amendments to the Planning Board and Ordinance are reasonable, and I urge you to adopt them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Drum. Uh, Bruce Thorne. <laughs> I'm here to support this amendment and to ask you commissioners to give it real serious consideration. I don't have an agenda. I'm not a contractor. I'm not a developer. In fact, I can't even drive a nail straight. When my wife calls one of you folks in as a vendor, she said, I'd like for you to come out and repair what my <coughs> husband fixed. So I'm not a I'm not a builder. I'm simply a voter, a citizen and a taxpayer. And I support this new infusion of people for one simple reason. All of us know, this is a bad analogy, but all of us know in animal husbandry, if we continue to breed inside and inside and inside, same thing over and over again, we get genetic recessives. We don't get the positive stuff. 
We need new blood in the system, just like we need new blood with you people. Same politicians, gets us in a rut. Ruts are not good. Uh, that's why I support this change. I'd also like to mention things that we don't, I wish we would see in our newspaper. Uh, United Nations Agenda 21. Now make me sound like a real radical. I can hear somebody over here, oh, oh. Well, just get on Google and look this thing up and see if you can believe what you read. Also, uh, the UNCSD, the Commission on Substantial Development, and how these things are tiered and how they work. They knew they couldn't get it through our Congress, so they work through our Environmental Protection Agency and it filters down to committees, it filters down to individuals. Hope you'll consider what I said. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Mr. Paul Higgins. My name is Paul Higdon, and I appreciate the board allowing us to speak to that. I think the item for discussion or this public hearing is strictly the amendment to enact term limits <coughs> on the planning board, and that's the only issue that I will address. I support that. I think it's good, as the last gentleman said, that we get an infusion of new ideas. You can get stagnant if you have people serving continuously for 10, 15 years. As a side note, I'm on the health board. I've had the privilege of serving there, and we're turned out. I think it's three terms. Is that right, Jack? Or do you know? <coughs> and, the, and the health board is made up of very specialized uh, professions. You've got doctors, uh, pharmacists, nurses, engineers. And if we can fill those positions after three terms, surely we can fill unregulated or unspecified positions on the planning board. So I'll speak in favor of retroactive term limits. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. Mr. <coughs> Allen Altman. Thank you. Uh, I've got to say what one of the previous speakers said. I don't have, I don't have an agenda. I don't have an ox to go over in this fight. But realizing that the President of the United States serves under a term limit, so does the Governor of the State of North Carolina, so does most of the advisory boards appointed in the state. I served two terms on Western Carolina's Board of Trustees. That was my limit. I had to go back to the farm when that was done. And that was a good thing. I don't think I've ever seen anything detrimental about term limits. It's usually for the good. Without term limits, as we see in our state legislators and our federal legislators, seniority becomes an assumption. And with that assumption becomes an assumption of power that's not really delegated to you. So I'm in favor of term limits for federal legislators, state legislators, county commissioners, any advisory board. I don't see anything detrimental about it, and I've served on it. So I ask you to vote in favor of the term limits here. It's not reality that I'm going to get everything I want, but any time I get a chance to speak for one, I will. So let's uh, let's go with term limits. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Leora, and I can't read your last name. I apologize. It's fixed. What's that? It's fixed. I'm a citizen. I didn't. I know what I came here for. I didn't really prepare anything. I'm in favor of what you're proposing uh, because I believe in term limits. We get into too many problems, and we don't have term limits. Uh, we get uh, political uh, things going on, uh, like so many people that have served in our Congress for years and years, and they're never going to change what they're doing. We need fresh ideas. There are plenty of educated and uh, people in this community that are fully capable of being able to step up and uh, take the place of these others as their term limits expire. Uh, it would give more input. Uh, when I was working, I was in a lot of quality control things, and uh, we had people
people come in to try to better our uh, production and to keep things working good. And they tried to get different members all the time because everyone had an idea and it was building on somebody else's idea. You, it's, it's just much better to where you have more people, more ideas, you get uh, the results you want. So I definitely uh, hope you do the, the term limits. I think it'd be better for the, uh, the county. I, I think the board is <coughs> trying to do some good things, but I really think that they need more input from uh, the community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Don Swanson. <coughs> Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'll be brief for the reasons that have been forward set in favor of the amendments to the uh, Planning Board Ordinance. I encourage you, it's a pleasure to stand here and support the board. And I encourage you to vote your conscience. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Mr. Carol Poindexter. <coughs> I'd like to thank the County Board of Commissioners for this public hearing to, this afternoon. I also would like to thank the Planning Board for all the hard, hard work over the years. And uh, I've got a few good friends on the board, and I know they've worked hard on several things. But as I sat there, I kind of listened to uh, different comments and stuff. And, uh, you know, the Planning Board is an advisory committee. I mean, when it comes down to ordinances, rules, or whatever, they advise the commissioners, at least five gentlemen up here, or whoever's up there, the one's going to vote for or against. But anyway, I'm in favor for term limits on the plan, not only on the plan on the board, but any board. You know, Macon County is going to evolve. Sooner or later, this, this slope ordinance that everybody's talking about is going to come up for a vote sometime in the near future, probably. And uh, that's going to be behind us, and uh, I'm curious to see what is next for the planning board. But in that being said, as the county does evolve, we need new faces, new possibilities, and new fresh and bold ideals on the board for the future. And I am also aware of the concern of losing good, experienced men and women that have worked on this board for years. And I would like the commissioners, if they would, to reserve the right to have these people, if they do adopt these term limits, to have the right to go back and use these people in an advisory capacity in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> I have the worst handwriting in the room, so I, I'm, I'm not picking. I just can't read the next name. Uh, it's between Carol Poindexter and Susan Irvin. That looks Sorry. like the first letter is S O, maybe an N L L. Uh, last name? Malka. I just can't read it. I apologize. It, Loretta Newton. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I you stood up, Loretta. <laughs> We're going to believe you. <laughs> We're going to take I, I your word for that. that. I don't mean to embarrass you, Loretta. That's all right. I just couldn't read your name. I'll... That's all right. I'm just going to assume that it's me. I'm not even sure it is. <laughs> We're going to give it to you. We'll say it says Loretta Nick. <laughs> I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, any, anyone who can serve in a small town, my hat's off to you. And I don't have an issue with any member on the planning board. I do have a concern that long-term representation on any board leads to uh, familiarity with uh, outside groups who want to come in and push their agenda. And having attended no a number of planning board meetings over the years, um, it, I don't know. I you know whether it's the <coughs> The commissioner board <laughs> dictating to the planning board things that they'd like them to do, vice versa. The problem is, and everybody I think knows where I stand, these beautiful mountains we look at, about 50% of that is forestry land, but some of it is my land. <laughs> and uh, no one has a right to tell me, see, if, if you need my property, to build a school. The Constitution says that you have to compensate me fairly. 
But with these planning boards in Washington, at the state, and now at the county level, you can regulate my private use of my property. You can make it so that I can't even enjoy my own property. And that's unconstitutional. So I'm, you know, I'm just not too hip on regulation. I'm here to say it flat out, but I think we need some fresh blood. I think that the county needs to consider the Constitution of the United States of America and to stop pushing regulation <coughs> to the extent that it affects our property rights, the property that we own. Thank you. Thank you. I believe in retrospect this probably is your name and I've got a handwriting teacher I'll refer you to. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I think Susan Irvin's next. Uh, my name is Susan Irvin and I am a member of the planning board. First, I'd like to correct a small piece of misinformation. I appreciate the good reportage of Quentin Ellison and her news stories, but I have not served on the planning board for two decades, as, represent, as she said in a recent article. It's, uh, it's going on 12 years, uh, nor am I the longest serving member. That honor goes to Lamar Sprinkle, who has been serving for 13 or 14 years and is the most recent reappointee for another full term. Uh, one of the reasons for considering term limits has been that uh, the thought that we need diversity on the board, and I agree with that. Historically and at present, most of the members on the board are men. And these have been businessmen for the most part, and further, a heavy representation of men in the building and development business. Given that, I'm surprised at the strenuous efforts to remove Lewis Penland, a very successful developer who obviously would not be set out on destroying his own livelihood. This is an important sector of our society, but it's not fully representative of the diverse interests, needs, and values <coughs> of the whole community. So we could use a forester, lawyer, transportation planner, land conservationist, outdoor recreation person, hydrologist, historian, <coughs> biologist, farmer, and women. <laughs> if I leave the board in April, there will be no women on the board. Sue Waldrop has applied. She is qualified, experienced, knowledgeable, and humorous, which will help. <laughs> it would be really constructive for you to put her on the board as Mr. Tate's replacement rather than another man associated with the development business. Uh, and I'm going to sneak in on a little comment on the slope hazard indication here so you don't have to listen to me again. Uh, the slope hazard, as indicated on the NCGIS slope hazard maps, I think it would be a real loss. There is no regulatory requirement, just an informational one, so that buyers might make the choice to have a professional look at a lot and choose the safest way to build. But providing such information will benefit people who want to move here and to build homes. To close, during my time on the board, I have openly been a strong advocate for rural lands, rural communities, and the mountain environment and it's care for those things that has directed my efforts on the board and will continue to do so as long as I serve. Thank you for the opportunity to serve my community and to represent those issues. Thank you. I think this made me a mistake, Shirley. Um, your name is on here again. Did you mean that you want to speak twice or did you intend to sign it? Oh, she'd love to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. Uh, Larry Stinker. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the philosophical side of the issue here. You know, we are all neighbors and we all live in Macon County. 
And when I look at Washington, D.C., and I see what they do up there, <coughs> and I look at what we do here in Macon County, there's a huge difference. But somehow during an election cycle, we seem to go backwards to what the people up in Washington, D.C. want us to believe about our particular political party. And, and when you look at the finances that we have in Macon County and how we've balanced our budget and how we've had a surplus and how we've made bipartisan decisions on creating the best environment for our community, and you compare it to Washington, D.C., it's like, Wow, you know, you commissioners and past commissioners should go up to Washington, D.C. and start running the federal government. Because the things that you've done here have not been done very much throughout North Carolina and, and not very much throughout the United States of America. And I know there's been a lot of <coughs> give and take, there's been a lot of discussions about, you know, harsh words or statements that have been made. But, you know, I like to kind of think about that, number one, we're all neighbors. We all share the same church or go to the same churches. We go shopping, we go hiking, we go fishing, we go hunting, and we share the same values. For example, I don't think anybody in this room would stop and not help someone who was injured in an accident. And I don't think anybody here would not pray for a sick child. And I don't think anybody here would not feed a hungry face. Why? Because we're all making counties. We have a special value system here. There's an unspoken heritage <coughs> value that's lived in Macon County for hundreds of years. If your house or your barn was struck by lightning and it burned down, guess what? And you didn't have insurance? Your neighbors would come out and help you rebuild that house and rebuild that barn. They'd take care of your family, and they wouldn't ask for anything in return. That's a value system that we should use forever and ever. We don't want to lose that value. We don't want people saying things that they say in Washington, D.C. when they talk about politics. So I would like to ask all citizens of Maiden County, as we go through this planning board discussion and other discussions, that we remember first that we are people, neighbors, and fellow friends, if you will, before we are Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. I think if we look at it from that standpoint for it first, when we make these decisions, we'll make much better decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Can't read my right either, huh? <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy Good. Jimmy Good. Chairman, nice to be here. Yes, sir. Um, I serve on the Macon County Planning Board, and uh, I have great respect for everybody that does. But I think it's come a time in this county that we start thinking about getting other people because I know plenty of people that wants to serve on that board that can't get on for political reasons. <coughs> for political reasons. I'd like to see the politics out of the planning board. The people want to serve, let them serve, please. I support the amendment to uh, do the term limits and retroactively because there needs to be new blood on that planning board. I support term limits, just like a lot of people here said, from top to bottom. The president's got it. I'd love to see it in the Senate in the House and at the national level. I'd love to see it in the Senate and the House here. Monopolies are outlawed in this country, but we do have monopolies in politics. I would love to see all politics out of all of our decisions, and let's make those decisions based on facts and facts only, and I stand here in support of these term limits. Thank you. Good. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, next is Bill Van Horn. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Bill Van Horn, and I live at 45 Pine Hill Road, Franklin, North Carolina. First, I want to thank the Macon County Commissioners for allowing me this opportunity to speak. Second, I want to thank the Commissioners for their public service, the current Planning Board members for their volunteer time, and their many past accomplishments. And finally, to thank our local newspapers for their efforts to cover the planning board meetings. I've attended several planning board meetings in the past, although I've not been to any recently. In my opinion, democracy is difficult and at times slow and messy. Bottom line up front, based on my knowledge of the current situation, I personally am for 
land use planning and accompanying regulations. I am for a strong planning board and I support the use of the Macon County slope hazard maps being referenced in county regulations as one reference for determining the potential for a particular location <coughs> being susceptible to earth movement. I am against planning board term limits. Referencing what I am for, time and again Macon County residents have come together and said they want to protect the beauty we have in Macon County. It is what makes us stay here or come here, and that beauty attracts visitors and new businesses. We need land use planning that strikes the right balance between protecting the, that beauty, our citizens' health, and our personal property rights. Concerns I have. First, that the county meets their moral obligation to protect our citizens and their investment in Macon County. Second, that the county is not liable for failure to have land use planning and regulations. Third, that the county does not have to expend our tax dollars to clean up construction mistakes or construction shortcuts. And finally, like, like it or not, land use planning and regulations are needed because there are greedy people that will take advantage of others. Concerning term limits, which I am not for, first, I believe volunteers need to be appointed for a specified period so that they know the length of their commitment. Second, volunteers who are not able or willing to meet their commitment to you as commissioners should be removed by the commissioners expeditiously. We cannot afford to wait till their term is over. And finally, we cannot afford to have a willing, capable, and trained volunteer sit out for three years before they could be reappointed. In conclusion, as Macon County continues to grow, we have many land use issues that need to be addressed to protect Macon County and its citizens. I believe this is best accomplished by a strong, seasoned, diversified volunteer board responding to your priorities and that presents you with draft documents ready for your consideration. Again, I thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Next we have Mr. Al Slater. I didn't uh, catch the last speaker's name, but I pretty much agree with him. There's a, there's a couple of things. I had about five minutes here, cut it down to about three minutes. Now maybe I got it down to a minute. Um, I, I'm not opposed to the concept of term limits. I am opposed to using term limits to remove existing members of the planning board and replace them with people who may be opposed to the stated mission of the planning board. In order to maintain some continuity and experience on the planning board, I recommend either letting the existing term members, the existing term of members count as the first term or begin the term limits at the expiration of the current term. There will be some turnover in the meantime as I'm sure there will be some members who resign or don't wish to serve another term. Uh, much of this controversy has been caused by an outcry from people who say regulations will stifle development and hurt the construction industry. Some have said that people are afraid to build in Macon County because they're afraid future regulations will devalue the property. I received an email a couple of days ago from a Mr. Dan Kelly who has a home and an almost uh, has an almost finished home in a development here, and he's concerned about the conditions in that development. Uh, he has a different view. Mr. Kelly believes the lack of regulations and controls by the county is currently hurting the construction industry, and will in the future stifle development. He says there's four other people at least, who would like to build in that same development 
and like to start building, but have the same concerns. Uh, I have some copies here of Mr. Kelly's email, uh, if y'all are interested. Uh, and I have never met Mr. Kelly, and his email is the first contact of any kind that I've had with him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slate. Next we have uh, Ms. Kathy Kinsley. Y'all well, is my brother, but he doesn't really tell me how to thank <coughs> <laughs> um, I simply agree so much with Mike Jackson, Lenny Jordan, Mr. Crawford, especially Mr. Van Horn, but Ms. Oliver really, I think, um, had a powerful statement in which she said the timing is just all wrong on this. I want to speak in support completely of Lewis Penland, the current board, uh, planning board members, and I don't support the ordinance that you have on your that you're planning to vote on tonight. Thank you. Uh, next is Mr. Mike Kent. Mike. Uh, we're here tonight to share our thoughts on the changes suggested to the planning board. Term limits and uh, at least by some published reports, uh, an idea to take away the responsibility the planning board has to suggest ordinances to the county commissioners, a sort of planning board that does no planning. Uh, from what I can gather from reports and emails which have been published, this is being done because some of the commissioners don't like what some of the planning board members have to say in their arguments for ordinances like steep slopes. They seem to be saying, if you're not going to play by our rules, we won't let you play. Let's be clear. While well, this meeting's purpose is to discuss changes to the planning board, those changes relate directly back to the suggested steep slope ordinance. An ordinance like this one is inevitable. We will have an ordinance in Macon County addressing these problems. We will have one not because <coughs> liberals get back into office or anyone is trying to destroy your freedoms. <coughs> or impose, property, impose on the property rights of others, but because of population growth and of the increased litigation that comes with it. This will eventually force the issue. You commissioners uh, have been given the opportunity to influence what that ordinance looks like, to take the recommendations of the planning board and the best maps and study them and produce an ordinance for all citizens of Macon County. Uh, so far, you've chosen to kick the can down the road and leave the decisions to someone who followed you. You have said in essence that you know better than the planning board. And now you are saying that you don't want to listen to what they have to say. I guess if you don't listen when something bad happens, you can say you were ignorant of the facts. Personally, I want my co commissioners to hear the warnings on both sides of an issue, to be willing to take a hard look at all issues, even those that their constituents may not like, <coughs> to make decisions to do things <coughs> I and others don't want, like, but are necessary choices, to be men, men willing or women willing to take responsibility and not blame others. It may well be a, be good to change some rules for county advisory boards, but not so you can get rid of those you don't want to listen to or to stock it with those who already agree with you. All county boards, like the planning board, should have uniform rules. If term limits are good for one, they're good for all. If you're going to change the rules, it is only logical and right to do it for all <coughs> county boards at one time. Thank you. Uh, next is Michelle. Uh, Michelle. Michelle I'm going to be short and sweet. I just wanted to let you know that I'm glad that you're considering. Mr. Master, are you a Macon County resident? But I'm just curious. No, I'm not. Part time, yes. Are you a Macon County resident? No. Okay. 
I just want to let you know I'm glad you're considering term limit for uh, the planning and zoning. Do you know that 90% uh, of North Carolina counties have three-year term limits for their advisory boards? This allows a variety of citizens from different backgrounds and experience to serve and have an input on the county's growth. Um, I just want to know why Macon County should be any different. Thank you. You move your will be in. <laughs> <laughs> resources, protect our way of life, and with a healthy de development for our county. Not based on the motivation of greed. So many times, especially during this economy, everybody is looking to make a quick dollar. We warn folks to, about the, uh, the get-rich-quick schemes, but instead try to get them to invest in the future. Long-term investments are always slow but steadily climb, whereas poor investments, investments look good now, but soon crash. The planning board is able to make valuable recommendations for the long-term investments of our, of our county, but the proposed limitations will render the planning board less effective. Having a political agenda, agenda and finagling a way to remove folks from the planning board at the board whom you don't agree with <laughs> Uh, isn't right, or I don't agree with that. I, for one, support sensible regulation on steep slope development, but I'm not trying to get anyone on the planning board who doesn't agree with the same opinion as myself removed. Term limits are ne not necessarily a bad thing, however, the timing <coughs> at this point um, is questionable. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Jason. <coughs> Jason, what, what's your last name? Yeah. Metter. M-E-A-D-E-A-D-O-R. -E <coughs> yes, sir. And we should have been doing this all night, probably just a clerical thing, but if you would state your name and state where you live. And <coughs> if Mr. Beals asked me a couple times a week, we're making kind of residents, and some of you we know and some we don't. But just give us your address so we know where you live. Uh, Mr. Bill Burner is next. I'm Bill Vernon, but now I'm a Macon County resident with a bad cold. Anyway. You live in Vernon, <coughs> I do indeed. I've heard some people earlier this evening talked about perhaps getting rid of the planning board, and maybe there's that impression. I'm here to say I don't think many people in this room want to get rid of the planning board. I support the planning board. Do I support the way it's been run? Not necessarily. I was uh, a year and a half ago at the Burning Town meeting when uh, we were not allowed to speak. You had spoken before. Mr. Penland said we were no longer allowed to speak on Steep Slope. That was the last planning board meeting I went to. Prior to that, I, as, you, as many of you know, Barney, back when you were the thing, I was going to them fairly regular. <coughs> I've seen the planning board get drugged from community to community to community with supposed input. Yet I see what went into the steep slope thing, and I'm not here talking about steep slope, just making a point. I saw what, saw what went in there, and there was no change. I'm here to tell you, gentlemen, that I think you have done a, a, a wonderful job as far as bringing this to a head here. I hope you will consider the term limits. I'm going to close with one last thing. I'll bet you there's a, I'll bet my socks there's a bunch of folks in here that if I was to say, let's have George W. Bush president for 18 years, I'd get attacked, and I'd probably get attacked if I said, uh, let's leave Barack Obama in there for 18 years. <laughs> if we can change it at the top, I think we'll be okay. So I support you. I uh, hope you guys will make the term limit decisions. If you support the status quo, leave them there. 
change the thing and don't make it retroactive. <laughs> but at some point, this has got to be addressed, it's got to be fair, it's got to be open to all the residents of Macon County. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Uh, next we have uh, Mr. Kent Busey of Bussing. How do you say your last name, Ken? I apologize. That's all right. It's just like business. It's busy. Busy. Yes. Gotcha. I'm Ken Bizzing. I live at 330 Shiloh Springs, Franklin, North Carolina. I am a resident and have been for some time. Used to live out by Kevin. I support strongly support the retroactive term limits as now being proposed. Thank you. Mr. John Seal. Can you get the short speech award tonight? <laughs> John Seal. John Seal, Patton Valley. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm going to be a little bit like Larry and kind of speak a little bit general. He's going to cover something like that, but uh, I think it's uh, perhaps something we need to hear. First of all, I'd like to speak in support of the planning board. They have worked long and hard to deal with the complex issues of development in Macon County. They've tried to develop minimum standards for development in order to provide safety and security for Maconians. It seems that opposition to their work comes from those who do not wish to be under such standards. Though opposition may be cloaked in freedom and personal rights, I believe that a more honest assessment is a desire to not be accountable to even minimum standards. <coughs> there are two components to the development issue. One, producer, to include the developer, builder, and realtor, and two, the consumer. They are equal, but in Macon County over the years, they have been unequal with the producers receiving favors. I would like to speak for the consumer. Probably not one of us would buy a TV or <coughs> even a microwave without a warranty or a drug without full <coughs> disclosure of its effects <coughs> and dangers. The purchase of a home is, for most of us, the largest investment we will make, and we may pay for it for most of our working life. Yet there's some, there seems to be an expectation that a home buyer does not need to have the assurance of a properly engineered home located on a safe land. The developer, builder, and realtor all bear the moral responsibility to provide the buyer with this information and the assurance of a safe product. In my 45 years here, I have personally witnessed many times when this did not happen. Complete freedom requires perfect self-regulation. Mankind has proven without a doubt that we are incapable this self-regulation. <laughs> if we were, the Ten Commandments would not have been necessary. <laughs> Our government has the obligation to work out regulations that provide safety for people and property and security of investment for both consumers and producers. To weaken and minimize the role of the planning board cannot <coughs> accomplish this. Safety and security are moral issues, and the moral issues should never be overruled by an economic argument. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, next, Mr. Uh, Dan Tinsley. I'm Danny Tinsley, and I live in Cartier J. I've got a little no here, so bear with me. I'd like to thank the planning board for all their hard work, especially in light of recent negative remarks directed to the chairman and certain members of the board. I'd also like to thank uh, you commissioners 
for the opportunity to speak. I moved to Macon County in 1978. I married here, worked here, raised a family here, and have retired here. <coughs> During that time, I've seen great changes in our county, especially in regards to our population. My experience has been a positive one. I've always been impressed with the progressive nature of our people and our government. It seems as though lately, however, there's been the presence of mistrust and negativity, and I regret that for our community and for the progress we've made. Oftentimes, it appears, those opposed to the efforts of this board to set some kind of standards for construction and safety have been met with a chorus of negative remarks citing their love of these mountains and their freedom as a rationale for no action. I say to that, I love these mountains and value my freedom as much as anyone. And that is what propels me to exhort you as our commissioners to meet the challenge and do what is right for the future of our county. I challenge you to look ahead and imagine our county 20 to 30 years from now. On one side, you have a movement that wants you to back off and essentially do nothing and let the chips or slides for fall where they will. The other side says go forward, keep our county a place where there is respect for property rights as well as safety. A place where, because of your foresight, credible builders will enforce standards that will benefit us all by establishing an environment of trust in which in turn will generate business and prosperity. It's up to you. Don't move us backwards. Don't let those that use fear and misinformation rule the day. Take a stand. Adopt building standards. Let the planning board continue to work without term limits. And above all, keep us safe by utilizing common sense and the tools that are available to us, including the slope hazard maps. Thanks. Next, we have Mr. Hal Chapman. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, I hope we get this right. A person's property is important. I support the idea of bringing new, fresh ideas to the planning board. I believe either you own property and have property rights, or you are property. Thank you. Thank you, Al. That was close to Ken in Lynn. I always appreciate that. Now, next, and I believe last, is David Culpepper. Howdy. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My name is David Culpepper. I was born here, and I am currently a resident in Patton Valley. Um, I strongly support term limits and retroactive term limits. Um, and I volunteer for the planning board. I need to submit an application to understand that. But I think the situation could be cleared up a lot easier without the heated rhetoric if we, uh, instead of trying to use force to shove regulation down people's throat, if all the people here that are for making sense, all the people that are for this regulation, if you would just come here tomorrow morning and go downstairs to the register of deeds, you can deed restrict your property against anything you want to deed restrict it against. You can put in there, no building on steep slope. Certain amount of houses can only be built on this. You can't build, you can't put a metal building up. You can do all that through private zoning deed restriction. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, David. Uh, that is uh, the conclusion of our speakers. I think we had 30, I think I 32, 31, 32. Just skip you? I don't know. Uh, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't skip you names that were on here. Maybe that you signed up on a different uh, sheet. What's your name? Florida <laughs> Peter. Oh. Here uh, Ms. Peter, yes. you're not on there, but uh, she, she, signed, uh, uh, she did sign up on another sheet, so we'll we'll accept that. You, you come right on. 
Teacher didn't follow directions. No, wait a minute. Teacher could not get it. You know, I think I'm pretty good at reading comprehension, but the way that you guys put that up there, it didn't make a lot of sense. So, anyhow, sorry. Okay, uh, I'm Olga Pater, and I live in Iola Valley, and uh, I'm here for a very personal reason. I work in the school system, and I work with children. One day, I was working with a sweet, adorable, three-year-old child. The next day, that child was dead. He was one of the victims in Peaks Creek. His unborn brother also died. It was a tragedy. There were five people who died, and that is why this is so important to me. I think that fate made it such that this happened. I had never met the family before, and after less than 24 hours, I was in tears. We cannot allow another Peaks Creek to happen again. We're talking about steep slope ordinance, the reason that the hazard, that the slope hazard maps came to be and Macon County was one of the first where it was done was because of Peaks Creek. Uh, how does all of this go with the, uh, sunny, the, the planning board? We need some kind of guidance. We need some kind of commitment to tell our commissioners this is where the citizens of Macon County want to go. We need to understand that change is totally inevitable. We cannot prevent change from coming about, but we can regulate the way that change comes about. And unless we start establishing some rules for that change, we are going to have a lot more tragedies. Uh, we have to remember that there is something called respect, and other people have talked about this. We need to respect our neighbors, we need to respect the land. And we need to respect the neighbors because somebody's property rights end where my property rights begin. And I'm very familiar with that because I do own property, okay? So I am not saying that people should not be able to do what they want with their land, but what we need to recognize is that what we want to do with our land today has a lot more possibilities than what was able to be done years ago. I think that the planning board is the way to guide us. I think that the people on the planning board have done a fantastic job. I think that applying any kind of changes to only one board in the county does not speak of fairness. It speaks of selecting a group to be targeted. And I think that really that should not be done. I think we need to respect each other. We need to respect the land that we live on. Thank you, Titus. That was uh, everyone we had signed up. Let me let me uh, commend each of the speakers. You guys are very respectful of each other, and regardless of how you stand, and I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate uh, the comments and the way you conducted yourselves. And also, we did that uh, with about uh, probably two minutes per person, so you guys did a good job of making the comments. Uh, brief, and we appreciate that very much. Um, Mr. Jones, that was all the speakers that we had signed up to comment. Um, any of the board members have any uh, statements that they want to make? So they do that at this time. And if not, we can close that public hearing and open it. Okay. We will come back for discussion. Yeah, yeah but full fledged discussion on this. Yes. I'll, I'll, we'll do that. Do, does any commissioner have anything to add at this point? Folks, I've brought the people here probably tonight more than anybody else did about something, and I want to ask this question to you. Anybody in here that believes this planning board is perfect, don't you hold your hand up? There's absolutely no room for any You can't hear me. I want to ask 
if there's anybody in here that believes this planning board is perfect and no room absolutely for improvement. Just hold your hand up. So there could be some improvement, right? I've got something else that I want to ask. I believe that we had a census in 2010 render a verdict to us of nearly 40,000 people in this county. At the same time, these 40,000 people is part of us. We've got, what, 11 planning board members? So you telling me that nobody else has the right ever to serve on that planning board except them. We don't need term limits. That's what I'm hearing most of you folks say. Nobody else has an opportunity to give their side of the story. Nobody gives, I mean, nobody has opportunities to share their expertise. There's, some, some, there's something right here that a lot of you people have overlooked because, number one, you took a second story statement on an email that I sent to the planning board that you didn't know nothing about. And that's the sad part. I'm not standing here cutting nobody down. If there's anybody that tells you that I have never sat down and tried to figure out safe building standards for houses, they're telling you a lie taller than I am. Mr. Bill, week before that, we went out, or the week before we went, uh, out there at our last meeting, did I not sit down with you and try to figure out some fire standards? But it seems like as soon as we mention anything about something, everybody flies to the conclusion, oh, they're trying to throw us off the planning board. I'm just trying to tell you something. This planning board is not perfect. And there is a small track of information that I could sit down with if you only would have known what I was talking about to where we could put this planning board to where it would work for everybody. Simple as that. If you only just sat and listened instead of reading rhetoric that you hear. When I get a chance in a little bit, I'm, I'm going to sit down because I've got some other things to do. And I want to show you where a simple track of leading information could solve this whole problem just like that. I thank everybody that came here. I appreciate listening to everything you've had to say. I was born and raised here. I'd do anything I could for any of us. I didn't draw this right here to start troubles. I don't need out of fairness. And I think if somebody has spent six years on this planning board, and you telling me that three years taking off is wrong, then I'm wrong. I'm sorry, I admit I'm wrong. But I don't see I'm wrong, okay? I'm only thinking that we need to be fair with everybody. This has nothing to do with politics. And if that's what you got in mind, we're not going to get nowhere to start with. Mr. Field spoke back there a while ago. I liked a whole lot of what you said right there, and I know that. You didn't believe it, that's what I say. He's a friend of mine, Bill Van Horn back there. A lot of others are too. Friends, I want to try to work with this community to try to be fair, to be honest, and do what's right too. So those of you people that's always keeping me down about it, give me an opportunity, let's see where we can take it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for an opportunity to address some outstanding issues both here tonight and at our meeting on January 14th. You know, I did an awful lot of listening in January because I didn't want to respond emotionally to what was said, and I chose not to extend an already lengthy meeting by responding to the allegations that were both written and spoken at that time. While I am confident that we will discuss our policy disagreements about the planning board, term limits, and such later this evening, my comments right, have, right now have more to do with process than policy. 
You see, what happened on January 13th and 14th was unacceptable. It should not be the way the board chooses to treat the citizens of this county, whether they agree with us or not. To that end, Mr. Chairman, I would like to extend my personal apology to the planning board as a whole and to Chairman Lewis Penland in particular. All members of the planning board, the ones we agree with and the ones we may choose to disagree with, are volunteers. Regardless of what some may think, they do sacrifice many hours of their time to provide assistance to this board and their county. They don't deserve to be ridiculed, demeaned, and derided by members of this board. It is significant to remember that at the end of the day, the planning board is simply an advisory board. They cannot set policy. If we, the Board of Commissioners, find ourselves in disagreement with the recommendations of the planning board or any advisory board, we feel free, we should feel free to ignore their recommendations or vote them down. We don't have to resort to accusations and ridicule. We always have the last word, and therefore we can afford to treat them with respect and dignity, and we should. With respect to Mr. Penland, he has led the planning board through some of the most controversial issues they have faced. He's been the icon for the board, and he's been the focal point for criticism by those who would like to prevent even the discussion of a controversial issue. Lewis, it's been my honor to serve alongside you. I don't think you're out there tonight, but thank you for your dedicated service to our county. And finally, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to correct the record on a few allegations that have been made. First, there were a number of motions made on January the 14th meeting, and it might have appeared that these were new and bold ideas, and only the ideas of one person. I think it's important to note, Mr. Chairman, that under your leadership, most of these motions were already under serious consideration. I'm reminded of a sign, Mr. Chairman, in a locker room that I used to coach in, and it says, it's amazing what can be accomplished when nobody cares who gets the credit. Lots of good stuff to be learned in a high school locker room, Mr. Chairman. Sometimes things don't move as fast as we'd like them to, but it's necessary to take the time to examine issues carefully before taking action. <laughs> Next, there were several comments referring to planning board efforts that implied that the planning board was running around doing whatever they wanted or giving us all kinds of stuff we didn't ask for. And that seemed to be justification for there's something wrong with the planning board. Put simply, these accusations are just false. The facts are these. The planning board was given tasking in February 2011 at a joint meeting at which all of us attended. Now, Mr. Tate was a member of the planning board at the time, but we were all there. The tasking included finished a review of the comprehensive plan, slope development subcommittee tasked to present finalized recommendations to the planning board, and then the planning board to the board of commissioners, and finish the buy-in to review of the subdivision ordinance. The simple truth is that the planning board has worked on those tasks and only those tasks throughout the year 2011. It's as simple as that. Now, it's quite possible that some people won't agree with the topics and they won't agree with the position taken by individual planning board members or with the product that was presented to the county commissioners. But that doesn't mean that the planning board was doing whatever they wanted. Another statement that was made was someone need to be keeping an eye on the product of the planning board and that's why we have liaisons to keep us informed. Webster's Dictionary <laughs> defines liaison as a connecting link or bond, a coordination of activities. It is important to note this definition does not include trying to push an agenda on that board or to try to prevent that board from having a discussion on unpopular or controversial topics. Nor does it state that the liaison's job is to drive the board to a specific conclusion. It says coordinate activities. In closing, Mr. Chairman, we've adopted some standards of conduct that we would like to apply to the planning board and perhaps all boards. I'd like to read a few of those. Standard of comment number three, create a positive environment in meetings. Standard of comment number four, or standard of conduct number four, maintain an attitude of courtesy and consideration toward colleagues, citizens, and staff during all discussions and deliberations. Number six, avoid the use of abusive, threatening, or intimidating language or gestures directed at colleagues, citizens, or staff. Number 10, not engage in harassing behavior or unwelcome conduct toward other board members, employees, clients, or citizens. These are pretty stiff standards, and we can discuss whether we want to modify some of those later. But my point, Mr. Chairman, is that if we intend to task our advisory boards to meet these standards, then we need to return to the days when we held ourselves to these standards. This doesn't mean we won't disagree, we will. It doesn't mean we won't argue, of course we will. It doesn't mean we can't hold firmly to what we believe, regardless of pressure, of course we should. I hope it does mean, though, that when we do disagree, we will do it with respect and a dignity that befits this board and the citizens of Macon County. They deserve nothing less from their elected officials. 
In that locker room I mentioned a minute ago, there's another sign. <laughs> Derek Rowland's seen this sign. It says, character is what you do when no one else is looking. We need to do it right, gentlemen, when people aren't looking and also when they are. A man can sure learn a lot from a high school locker room. I thank you, Mr. Chairman and fellow board members for your of serving as Panama Board Chairman for many years, many of you in this room. And we need it. Uh, a lot of people tell me that. Uh, if you've not read the mission statement of the Planning Board, it's simple, to develop and advocate public policy and procedure to preserve the integrity of our mountain heritage, the beauty, beauty and tranquility of our communities, as well as our natural environment for the benefit of current populations as well as future generations <coughs> while sustaining economic vitality and the social welfare of our citizens. That is the mission statement of our planning board. Now, what we're talking about is term limits, and we'll have a further discussion on term limits. I will tell you right off that, first of all, this is what the term limits are. We have term limits. Do you have the political will to dismiss somebody from the board is the question. Well, you heard Mr. Drummond, I think, uh, say what happened the last time. Well, I think if you have good communications, we did away with term limits. You gotta know that I'm the elder statesman of this board. I know I look the youngest, but I'm the <laughs> youngest. <young woman. laughs> but we did away with term limits. Why? It was real simple. We wanted the continuity of people because the things we worked on, People will tell you, the high impact ordinance took almost three years. You talk about dragging to the community community bill, we wore it out. And we use those things in that. And are we still continuing to tweak them? Yes, we are. Subdivision ordinance, the same thing. The important speakers are tonight are Ms. Oliver. And this letter we have from the gentleman that Mr. Slagle brought, Mr. Kelly. These are true people that has been influenced by these decisions. Now, the planning board were given tasks. Mr. Cooper spoke to them. They have stuck to those tasks to the T. They have not wavered. The, when, the when the planning board's done, the commissioner can do three things. They can do exactly what the planning board suggests. They can do nothing. Or they can change it and implement something similar to that. But the buck stops here. To go out and attack a volunteer on a board is out of bounds. To compare them to a dictator is out of bounds. And that's what Mr. Haven did in his email. Totally out of bounds. We cannot have that. When we start doing that, all boards, and I think if we're going to have term limits, it must apply across the board, and we'll have that discussion later. But here's where the term limits are now. Of the nine members, you have one that's up, that was up in Newton, November. You have three up in 2012. You have three up in 2013. You have two, th two up in 2014. So really, in less than three years, you could have a full turnover on the board. But this board has that ability. If you have the political will to do it, you can do that. But going back, and the reason we, that we did away with term limits was we thought the continuity and the experience that was working. And believe me, there's plenty of diversity on the planning board. Ask one of them. There's plenty of diversity and plenty of conversation. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to the conversation when it comes to term limits. But I do want to say thank you to those who served on the planning board. You spent many hours. If you disagree with one planning board and to come out and publicly attack him is absolutely wrong, whether you agree with him or not. So Mr. Lewis Bennell is not here tonight. But I stand in defense of Lewis Pennell, and I would stand in defense of any planning board member who would go into an unjust attack like he just went through. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the discussion. To the discussion. All right. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Any other discussion as, as relating to the hearing? I know we'll have more discussion about that when, when the time comes. Um, and I know I've had a lot of comments from the 
media has been kind enough to contact me. That I get the message, and I appreciate that. Uh, but I, I appreciate my fellow board members sharing your thoughts. Um, I, I see my responsibility as, as making sure that we're a, uh, an active working board to work together in a positive way. And uh, I feel like I've done that, and I'm going to continue to do that. And uh, we do have some diversity of opinion uh, in the room and certainly on our board. Really? And uh, we do. And that's okay. Um, but we'll, we'll anything else to do with it? Just close the public hearing. Okay. If there's, if there's nothing else, uh, this will close the public hearing uh, on, the, on the matter to do with the uh, planning board ordinance.